Okay, this is a video <laughs> that continues in this corporate finance step by step. I'm trying to resurrect the corporate finance analysis a bit. And I've made a prior video with some introductory points. And now I'm going to move into the subject of requiring, <laughs> excuse me, acquiring the data and evaluating the return on invested capital and the growth rate. Now, I've, I'll make a different video on the theory of returns growth and cost of capital. In this one, it's going to be practical. How do you, once you got the data, once you bring in some data, some historic financial statement data, how can you go about dissecting the balance sheet and ultimately making a little analysis like this where you can choose different, all sorts of different series, review what's happening, and see how the return maybe is correlated to the stock price or maybe not. Okay, so now... I, again, there's going to be another video where I go through this uh, uh, workbook dot, workbooks dot open and how to get financial data from either the internet, and in this case, there's a website for Indian companies that's really better than anything I think that exists in the U.S. in, in a way because it goes through my God, it goes through 1999. I get the balance sheet back through 1999. How wonderful to get some history. <laughs> I don't want to digress into philosophy, but if you don't understand history, you don't have anything. If you don't know the, what happened in the, in the Mexican-American War. Oh, my God. God. Okay, let's not digress too much. So we've got the history here. Now, in this money control, they give you some statistics. They give you things like return on assets here. Now, just one minute. When they give you things like this, I'm going to divide these these little things by a hundred. So, if I uh, let's find where they have all these. Uh, uh, ratios all of these things uh, should be uh, no here all of these things the margins one second just a second oh my god control c maybe i i, I shouldn't have done that thing with the other thing all d s and then no values uh, and I press divide, excuse me for making that. And then uh, if you, I'm going to open this generic macros because part of this video really is about very practical kind of things to do. If you, Just in case, okay, I just press shift control P, a stupid little shortcut, okay? Our basic question is going to be this, here, this is return on equity. Perhaps we'll look at return on equity and return on capital employed. I'll just make a little graph here. Okay. And the return on equity is higher than the return on capital employed, meaning that they're having leverage. Oh, oh I've got to stop. Okay, now we're going to do two things. We're going to compare the return on equity and the return on capital employed to the <coughs> stock price. And we're also going to be a lot more careful about computing the return on invested capital. And understand, here's the big deal, there's not necessarily a really simple formula to get there and we're going to have to get this the, the the financial reports and we can't just take things from the 
internet, we're going to have to um, uh, uh, look at some of the notes to the financial statements. But first, let's get the stock price in. Now, they in this wonderful thing, it's, they have the price to book ratio. They have the EV to EBITDA ratio, and this has been going up and down, and we eventually want to understand, well, what ratio should we look if we have a terminal value for this one? But they don't have the price to earnings ratio, and they don't really show what the what price they use. Was it a year-end price? Was it an average price? And so on and so forth. So let's... The first step, let's get the stock price. Now, to get the stock price, I have this uh, uh, file. And uh, in video number one, I used the stock price monthly. If I use a daily stock price, look how much bigger the file is, obviously. Because it's 30 times bigger, basically, and it goes more slowly. But you can get the data. And all you have to do to get the data is look at it and change month MO to D when you uh, look at the URLs. That probably didn't mean much to you. Uh, you can uh, I'll, I'll refer, you, refer you to a video to find that. So let's take this stock price. We can press Alt E M and take that and put it. Uh, maybe before this sheet okay i'm going to go ahead and create a copy and now we have that stock price now let's say that i think on this for the these these companies the stock the the, the uh, fiscal year end was 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 march so i think i'm going to Put, I'm going to add a couple of years, and I'm going to put a, a fiscal a flag or something like that. Okay, now this is a, a key theme. If I put equal month, and we said the, the real start of the fiscal year was April, I'll, I'll just... I'll put when, when that occurs, and then I'll also put, hmm, uh, and I'm also going to put and the month of the prior, the month of the last one, which this isn't a month, was equal to three. Okay, it's going to give me a value. I'm not worried about that. But I am uh, uh, going to start here now. Just let me close this really big file for a minute. I hope I, I didn't make any changes to this file. So let's just double click on this one. Okay. Now, when you, I'll, I'll, I'll stop. I'll come back to that in a minute. And then let's uh, let's put a, a fiscal year. The the the. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to start with just the year of the date. No big deal. Shift control the thing to the left of the one if you have a, a kind of US computer. And then we put an if this is true, then we take this plus one. Otherwise, we just go here. That's a typical kind of date function you might work on. Uh, let me switch the formulas for a minute. And what we have is hopefully here when I better change the format of this date. You just click on the whole thing, press shift control three. When we hit uh, an April date, we have a true. Okay, very good. And then uh, we have the year and we also have a little bit of a problem with a, a couple of these stock prices that had uh, nothing. So I'm going to now 
make a little table of the years. So let's start with 1996. Now, if you want to go to 2019, you press Alt-E-I-S, and then you can press Alt-C to get it to a column, and then you can press 2019. So that's, for me, a good kind of quick way to do things. And um, I think we better, I'm going to look at the closing price and the adjusted uh, closing price. The closing price, uh, I'll put uh, fixed. I, I'm worried about the that, that little thing that was the, the little null. So I'm just going to first take the a regular first value and simply put an if statement if is number okay of this one if it's a number well then of course take the regular number otherwise take the value immediately before and I think I can copy this to put ADJ close fixed Okay, and then we'll just, there, this is the analogy, uh-oh, well, I did something very silly here, obviously. Okay, this should have been this one. Double click on this one. And then all I want to show you that if you use lookup or Average if right now, and later I, I'm, I'm sure we'll come up with something for index. Those are the three functions you really should get good at. Well, average if is kind of easy. We can just take an average if, and what we do is we need to click on the entire column. Don't use the F4s. Please, I know nobody will listen to me on this. And then we th this is our criteria. And then we put in the closing price, okay? And we shift, maybe I just press shift control one. So this is the closing. And then maybe uh, that's the average, sorry. And then if I want, uh, this is the average of the closing price. And then if I want the, the close price, We'll use equal lookup. It just will take the last one. Okay, we'll put lookup, and then it needs a lookup value, so you, it's a little bit backwards, and then you put the lookup vector you're using, and then you put the lookup price. And then, so we, we get our uh, closing price. And, uh, it increased pretty dramatically here. Well, let's try to understand why that happened. And then we can put adjusted close and do the same sort of thing. I'm just going to get the average for this one. I don't know. I'll, I'll do both. Average if, click on the range, click on the criteria, and click on the uh, average. I just press control space to get that whole thing. Okay, so this, I'll put adjusted close average, and then let's put adjusted close and adjusted price. And that adjusted price accounts for dividends and uh, uh, stock splits, okay, and other things. Now, so this is again equal to lookup and you use the lookup value you compare it to the whole thing and then you take the adjusted close at the end to make sure this is really working let's look at the very last uh, one so the very last uh, price we had was 1300 and there i just proved it take it took the uh, end of the <clears throat> end of the year okay so that's the lookup and the and the average if two things that uh, uh, I hope will be very helpful and uh, I'm going to press control alt c 
it says I have to initialize the generic macros and control alt C and this is just going to color things for us so I'll color everything that's uh, in input in blue but the main thing I want to use is this conditional formatting and later I'll mark uh, the links from another sheet okay and we have I don't know if you like these colors but we can clearly see when we're hitting a new uh, year and we can get all the uh, data let's perhaps we should do one little more thing with the lookup why don't I let's just very quickly compute the beta again so I'm gonna this time I'm gonna use the adjusted close uh, and then maybe the adjusted close fixed of course and then let's get the stock index for the same thing okay and we put equal lookup and you go to the nifty 50 here click on we're going to <clears throat> after we put the lookup we're going to take this date and look up on the stock index date and then just look up there see how fast that is okay and then the problem is we don't start till 2007 so i'm going to do something here we need two columns we're going to make a regression of this price against this price but i'm only going to do it I'm going to, so I put the, I need to, not this price, the change in the price. So I'll put if, how about if, if error. And then we take this price divided by the last price. No, we take the log of this price divided by the last price. Or let's put false. Okay. And then we'll get a bunch of false. And then we'll do the same thing, but this time I'm going to say if this is true, then we'll take the closing price, the log of the closing price divided by the pre previous uh, period of closing price. And otherwise, we get false. Now, the false is a very good thing to have because now I can make a little regression, I can put the slope. And the intercept. And the slope, if we have falses, the slope just is, it's going to ignore all those falses. And we can say the known y's, which is the stock index, against the known x's, which are this one. And we get a beta of 1.17. That's how easy it is. And if we want to get this alpha, the intercept we do the same thing and you can if you really don't believe me you can prove it kind of yourself that y's are the stock price and x's are the this one the alpha was just about zero okay and i hope i uh, oh this 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 uh went into the uh, we're ready to go okay now let's take these stock prices and put the end of year price here and then we'll put the average price to do that let's use the lookup once again now I put the uh, oh it looks like I have two different dates here so this is we don't need all of this crap here so let's this is just before the cash flow statement excuse me for leaving this in okay so let's get the year of this okay and whoops oh i better just type it in okay now i can I, i've got generic macros open so i can press shift control r 
OK, and we fix the uh, dates and we use look up again. Whoop. OK, and it would be a crime to to waste time with more than what you need. Now let's look up on the end of the year price. So I'm going to go over here and put this uh, uh, closing price. And I didn't mean to do that. We have to do this first. And this time you do have to press F4 on the entire column. OK. And F4 again. And there is our closing price that we can just uh, put in and uh, get the numbers. Now, this is just can't believe I didn't do this. I'm going to put I'm going to sort this. Uh, I'll, I'll desort probably and we go to options and we sort from left to right and we better sort it sorted on row number uh, three here. Okay. And uh oh. And I guess I have to fix these dates here. Excuse me for that. Okay, and we better add one. Okay, and now I've got all of it. Uh, somewhere I've got all the uh, closing prices I hope come on get there okay so there was a big jump in the price maybe we could uh, understand this and let's just practice the same thing since I so you put look up you look up on the year you go to the uh, stock price you press the F4 and then you uh, this time get the um, average price with F4 I think that's what I wanted okay so that's the average price for the year so we can compute our statistics either way now let's move from this so <coughs> I would like to eventually make a graph of different rates of return compared to this price. Now, let's do this. It should only take a few minutes. Let's put our uh, graph data. Now, to do this, what I always would do is put a row. And let's start, let's make a graph of potentially three different items. So let's say I want to graph what's in row 20, row 24, and row 30. And all I have to do then is type index. So this is the third uh, function, really, that's necessary. You press on the whole column, and you go and click on the row number and just press the F4. And then I'm going to do the same thing. In index, click on the entire row number and get the second one okay index click on the uh, do i really have to say this again that was kind of stupid and click on this one now i'm gonna go ahead and get the year from this graph okay and i'm gonna press oh this time i better just press Control r and I don't know why we went to 2023. Okay. And now all I can do is shift control R and we get these three things graphed. And then to make this graph, instead of F11, I'm going to press alternate F1. And we get the graph of these three items. Okay. And then to, to, to kind of make it more flexible, uh, let's put a little spinner box around these. Now, I've made so many of these in different videos. I really don't want to go through the whole 
theory of these spinner boxes you can say they're a little bit of a gimmick but i'm going to start with row one and i can't remember i think i probably have about maybe even about 400 lines i have no idea let's go to this sheet it's 140 more like it and then we click on this okay so maybe i'll put because we're going to be adding lines i'll put uh, 200 okay so now i if i wanted to switch this around i can go up now there if you uh okay so we're just graphing different items in the whole sheet and it, now i can copy this and put this to here and i better change this d3 to e3 and i and we can get something else on the next line and i'm going to copy this one more time and make this to f3 so i've got three lines and we can make all sorts of different graphs and then if we don't like this now these zeros there's a technique i have to get rid of the zeros this time i'm, I'm going to leave it out okay and maybe this graph means something perhaps not we can do another thing for the three different graphs we can go to the developer and simply insert a a little uh, draw uh, what do you call drop down or combo box this time it might not be really perfect from a cosmetic standpoint but we should do the same thing i'm clicking on the entire uh, uh line uh, entire row rather and then click on this one so we can uh, now get this we can kind of pick and choose so if i would like to see what happened to the return on invested capital let's go and finally that's our income statement and then we got some some more stuff and then we have some financial ratios and profitability ratios and they don't call it they call it return on capital employed now that's you can't even see that and let's copy that over here okay and then we can uh, right click and the only thing we have to change on this one is to change the uh, the to the second number and let's this time get it to be maybe return on they call it return on net worth which i call return on equity and let's do one more okay and this time let's go and go to a different sheet back to this sheet and click on that one press ok and then this time let's get the closing price or we could get the average price let's get the end of the year price now i'm going to make this end of the year price this last one i'm going to go and put it on a different uh, axis and why don't we uh, uh, change the series chart type and make the first one a line and the second one a line and we can now try to get a handle a little bit on what's going on in the company it's kind of interesting that the stock price increase was not correlated to the uh, not highly correlated at least to the return on equity in fact the return on equity was going down a little bit and so was the return on net worth uh, but the stock price was going up that could be easily explained by growth so uh, let but it also could be explained by the fact that the 
maybe they weren't really careful in how the uh, in how the return on invested capital is computed so let's make a little calculation here now when i inserted the lines here let's see what happened this was still in b and this went all over to e perfect i did not realize that okay and uh, what i'm going to do now is compute first the uh the the uh invested capital to compute the invested capital i put something called direct here and then financing and if we 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 go through and put a little one for financing that's and one here for debt those mean that means this is part of the financing activities of the of the of the company and then for the net block i put a one here because that's a direct investment i mean that's related to the core operations excuse me now this investments that's going to be the big issue actually it's not that big an issue is it well <laughs> it, a little bit okay yes these investments went up to as much as the net plant so i'm going to call that instead of related to the core operations i'm going to say that's related to financing and it's something that we should subtract from the financing and then for the current assets well this is related to the finance but the cash and what happened to the cash the cash went up and down okay that's not related to financing now there's some judgments here these loans and advances are not related to financing and i could either put them in the total or not current liabilities i'm going to say is a part of the operations and so is provisions but that's a liability so you put negative one and we don't need the net uh, current assets or anything else now if this all worked we put uh, invested uh, capital direct and then i'm going to control d put invested capital financing okay and it should be the case that if i use a sum product and i take all of the data all the way to the top and multiply that by the the little uh, ones or zeros i should get the same answer whether we use the financing approach or not and i'll probably get a different answer and then i'm going to switch off the video oops yes i will if i use that function okay and let's take the same thing let's go all the way to the top and multiply that by this time the financing method okay and make absolutely sure that you have exactly the same things in both and my god it worked okay and i didn't even cheat really because okay and now we're going to compare that invested capital and go down to our profit and loss and look at the uh net operating profit okay but we have to make sure that that net operating profit for example does not include things like the uh, uh excuse me things like the return on the investments now what i've seen for other my one a sample of one when you have this other income that could well be related to non uh, financing i mean uh, non-operating activities okay so let's put uh down here let's start with noi not adjusted and to do that if we had ebito that would be really good but what we have is 
we have profit before exceptional items and that subtracts the depreciation but it also subtracts these finance costs and you certainly don't want to do that um, and let's see the rest of this employee costs change in inventories okay i don't know really uh, what that is they do they have anything in this one we we wouldn't i wouldn't want to compute this transfer thing so i would say let's take the uh, profit here first let's just start with that and then we'll put adjustments and the first thing and and uh, how about adjustments for financing and transfers okay so we go up and i hope you're seeing uh, i know this is a little boring i hope you're seeing that this is fairly standard so far but not completely and now let's investigate what's in this other income i got to turn the video off for a minute Okay, I've downloaded the annual report. Now we have to look very quickly through all of these pictures. I haven't actually downloaded it. I've just got it on uh, Google Chrome here. Okay. And let's get to the financial statements. Okay, let me pause. Okay, it took a long time, but I found the balance sheet. This is the consolidated balance sheet, and frankly, I'd have to do a little more studying to find out um, what the, um, uh, let's go down to the investments, non-current. You can see they have all of these uh, uh, different companies traded and they have some preferred shares. And they have uh, more preference shares, debenture. Uh, they have some interest income. And I don't know why they put these things in other. Uh, invested capital calculation. So I'm going to go down and where we have NOL. And then I'm going to also adjust for other income okay so let's we're going to take uh we're going to take that out of the income just like we do for the rest of it okay so we have uh, adjusted adjusted n o o i okay and We'll take this one and we'll add back the uh, uh, financing and subtract the other income. So far, didn't make much difference. And then to get our return on invested capital, we need no PAT. So we need the tax rate. Let's put the tax rate. And we can go up to the profit. Uh, the tax expense and divide it by the profit before tax so we can just take this one okay shift control p and then they're getting about 19 20 percent now we could put a statutory rate in as well that's another uh, uh, kind of item but these these look a lot lower than the statutory rate so i'm going to go ahead and put that Leave that, and I'm going to put N O P A T, not op net operating profit after tax. So we take this one multiplied by one minus the tax rate. Okay. Oops. Uh, and I don't want to show this thing on there. Okay. And then we can get the. Now let's get the return on invested capital. So. We can put our average invested capital here and just take the average 
of this first period or the last period okay and I missed it here this or this and then we put ah am I still recording And then we put perhaps the oh, stupid thing. And then I, I put the, uh, I'm just struggling with the shortcut I had. And then the N-O-P-A-T, perhaps. No plat, whatever you want to call it. I got rid of, uh, from here. And then let's compute the ROIC. Okay. And this shows you that they had a very high ROIC and it was kind of coming up and down, but it's, it's uh, uh, still extremely high. In fact, what we can also do is we can also put the financing cost and then we can put the debt here. Okay. And the financing cost, it's, that's like our NOPAT. <sighs> um, okay, here's our financing cost. And let's get the debt. And now... Let's get the uh, pre-tax cost of debt. And I really, excuse me, I better put the average debt here. Okay, and let's get the kind of cost. Now, if you, here, you can see that their return is a lot higher than their cost of capital, even if their cost of capital is going up. And then we can put our investments, or, or let's put our other income here. But now we're going to compute the return from the other investments and then I could put other income after tax okay and just do almost like that no plat multiply that, that by one minus the tax rate ah oh, come on okay and Then we can put the investment average investments. And we probably should also add the uh, uh, other those other loans. But for now, I'm going to do it just like this. We should probably all, all also add these loans and advances. So maybe I'll, I'll add those. Okay, because those are going to earn some income. I just did it wrong. <sighs> okay, how horrible is this? I wonder if anybody is possibly watching this right now. I would be shocked. Okay, this plus this plus the uh, investments. That's what's going on here so we had some really kind of low years and they went up and I'm going to put total investments and then let's put average investments and just take the average of this year and the last year and then put the return 
on investments, on other investments, how's that? Okay, and let's take this other income divided by this. So they had a 5% return and 4% and 9% and 3% and so forth. Okay, now we can go to our graph perhaps and let's look at the, what we just looked at. Let's find the return on invested capital. Okay. And let's compare that to the, the number that they uh, suggested in this little internet thing. Okay. And I am going the wrong way. Excuse me for that. Profitability ratios, return on capital employed. So the ROIC has kind of a different pattern than the other ones. It, certainly it's not the same, and our ROIC suggest, suggests a higher uh, number. And then we can compare this to the closing price, just like we did before. I'll say N via price. Okay, and maybe, okay, hmm, they had a high return here, it went low. And then it kind of got, went up, but doesn't explain this price. And we could also say, well, instead of this, let's look at their, let's be very simplistic about the weighted average cost of capital and look at the pre-tax cost of debt. That's the gap they're making. Now, the next question is, can they grow the company from this? Have they been able to really grow the company? So let's look at sales growth. Okay, and let's just take this period, sales. Uh, maybe I'll use it before the other income because that's divided by last minus one. Now, we don't get it for the first period, of course. fancy here and we can kind of see what's have they been able to take this income and really grow it and let's put that on the graph so let's instead of putting the pre-tax cost of debt let's go down to the sales growth and uh, I don't know if this is explaining the stock price graph a little bit better, but they've been able to take this high return and grow it. And you could say, well, that's causing the, these increases in sales combined with a good return should be increasing the value of the company. And I hope this long and boring video has shown you some Excel tools and some ways to kind of really look at the company. Let's do one more thing. Let's put the return on the other investments. Okay, so maybe that's a, a part of what's going on as well. Now, the next video we'll make is how to uh, take some of this and make some assumptions out of all this stuff. Okay.